Hey geometry students, in this lesson we are going to be talking about graphing and solving linear inequalities. Now this is a review lesson that you covered back in algebra. In algebra we solved, we, we graphed these linear equalities by setting up the equation in its slope intercept form, finding the slope, finding the y-intercept, and then graphing the associated equation. Okay, I used the word equation once, but technically we're not graphing equations, we're graphing inequalities. So there's a couple of rules that we have to follow because we're graphing inequalities instead of equations. First of all, we're going to have to decide whether the line that we graph is dotted or solid. A dotted line means that the line bounds all of the solutions of the problem, but any points on the line itself are not actually solutions. A solid line means that the uh, line itself is solids, uh, is, is solutions to the equation. Uh, so that's going to uh, be an important consideration we're going to have to do in this problem. And then the other thing that we're going to have to do in this lesson is shade the part of the graph where the solution set lies. All right, let's take a look at how to do that. So first of all, we're going to start with one that's not actually like shading and um, dotted or solid lines yet. We're going to do letter A, solve the linear inequality for Y. And what we have to do in this one is get Y on a side by itself. And this is a good preview of the lesson because a lot of what we're going to be doing in this lesson is getting things in slope intercept form, which means we need to get Y on a side by itself. So what is this going to look like? Uh, I'm going to write this equation, except I'm going to start by adding 2x to both sides. So it's going to be negative 4y is less than 2x, because I added 2x to both sides, minus 8. And now I'm going to divide both sides by negative 4. Now you may remember when you divide an inequality by a negative, it changes the direction of the sign. So this is no longer four, negative 4 by is less than, it's y is greater than, and then I need to divide everything on this side by negative 4. Uh, 2 divided by negative 4 is negative 1 half, so it's going to be negative 1 half x. And then uh, negative 8 divided by negative 4 is plus 2. So I should end up with the equation y is greater than negative one half x plus two. All right, moving on to letter B. Now we're gonna actually graph on a coordinate plane. And when we graph these equations, we first need to get them into y inter uh, slope intercept form and then figure out what the slope and the y intercept is. In this equation, it's already in slope intercept form and I see I have a slope of two, so my line is gonna go up two over one, up two over one. It's not going down 2 over 1 because the 2 is positive. So it goes up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. And it crosses the y-axis at 6, negative 6, negative 6. Hey, I'm going to point out one other thing. I notice that this is greater than or equal to, not just greater than like the next one. Because it's or equal to, that means that points that lie on the line are solutions to the equation. So I'm going to graph this one with a solid line. Let's take a look at what this looks like. Notice this one is graphed with a solid line. This, uh, notice these axes count by twos, okay? So this crosses the y-axis, the y-intercept at negative six. It's negative six. And it goes up two over one, up two over one, up two over one, up two over one. That's how I would graph this line. Now, the last thing I need to do is figure out which side of the line to shade. Do I shade the top or the bottom? Well, here's what you do. You choose a point on one side of the line. The best point to choose, as long as it's not on the line itself, the best point to choose is the point zero, zero. Choose the origin. And let's plug that into our equation. Zero is greater than two times zero minus six. That's zero is greater than or equal to negative six. Ask yourself, is that a true statement? Is zero actually greater than negative six? The answer is yes. If it is, I'm going to shade the entire side of the line that my test point is on. In this case, the side that 0, 0 is on. If 0, 0 didn't work out and it made it a false statement, I would just shade the other side of the line. All right, let's move on to letter C. Graph 2y minus 3 is greater than 
five minus x. Okay, this one we have a little bit of work to do before we graph it. We need to turn it into slope intercept form. So uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write it with two y, but I'm gonna add three to both sides right, right away. So it's gonna be two y is greater than, let's see, five plus three is eight minus x. Okay, um, I'm just gonna rewrite this, but I'm gonna move x to the other side of the eight. So it's gonna be negative x plus eight. And then I'm gonna divide both sides by two. Y is greater than negative one half X plus four. Y is greater than negative one half X plus four. Now, first thing I'm gonna note is that in this particular equation, it's not or equal to, it's just greater than. Because it's greater than and not or equal to, that means that my line is going to be a dotted line. Take a look at this line. Notice that this is a dotted line. What is my y-intercept? Positive 4. What's my y-intercept here? 4. There it is. And then um, I need to go, my slope is negative 1 half, so I go down 1 over 2. Down 1 over 2. Down 1 over 2. Now again, notice that uh, my axes count up by 2s, but it still makes sense. Down 1 over 2 down one over two. That's how I graph this. Now I need to figure out which side of the graph to shade. I notice that zero, zero is not on the line. So I'm going to plug in zero, zero. Let's see, I get zero is greater than zero plus four. Or if I simplify, zero is greater than four. Is zero greater than four? No, that is a false statement. Zero is less than four. So that means that the side that zero, zero is on must not be a solution set to the equation. I'm going to shade the other side of the line. This is where all of the solutions to the equation actually lie in this shaded region, not on the line itself. All right, letter D. Same sort of thing for letter D. I need to start by rearranging. So in letter D, I am going to subtract X from both sides right away. That gives me negative 4Y is less than or equal to See, I subtracted x from both sides, so it's 6x plus 8. Next thing I'm going to do is divide both sides by negative 4. But remember, when I divide by a negative, it flips the inequality sign. If I divide or multiply both sides by a negative, the inequality sign flips. So this is now going to be greater than or equal to. Um, and then I need to divide by negative 4. 6 divided by negative 4 is the same as negative 3 over 2x uh, minus, because it's 8 divided by negative 4, minus 2. So that should be my equation. y is greater than or equal to negative 3 halves x minus 2. Notice that this is going to be a solid line because it's or equal to. And let's look at how this line is graphed so we can just verify that we did it right. So notice that it crosses the y-axis at negative 2. That's a y-intercept. And it should go down 3 over one, down three over one. Now let's see how that looks. Um, oh no, I'm sorry, down three over two because it's negative three over two. So we're gonna start at uh, this point here. We're gonna go down three, down three, these axes count by two. So down three is right here. Over two should be over to the next axis right there. Down three over two, uh, that works out. So, the last thing I need to do is choose a test point. We're going to choose 0, 0 because it's not on the line. I could choose 1, 1 if I wanted to. Let's just try a different test point than 0, 0. Let's try 1, 1. Will 1, 1 solve this equation? Uh, so that's uh, 1 is greater than negative 3 halves minus 2. Uh, well, that obviously solves it because negative 3 halves times 1 is just negative 3 halves. Minus 2, that's going to be a big negative number. Compared to positive 1, positive 1 is going to be greater than a negative number. I know that that works. I'm going to shade this side of the graph. And then on to letter E. This is our word problem. Trevor has two appliances connected to a power supply that provides 15 joules of power per second. If X represents the power to the first appliance and Y represents the power to the second appliance, Use the graph the region that shows the possible power to each appliance. Use your graph to determine whether Trevor can send seven joules to the first appliance and six to the second. Okay, so the way that this is going to work is I'm going to have appliance X plus appliance Y 
has to be less than, let's see, connected to a power supply that provides 15 joules of power per second, less than or equal to 15. Because it provides 15, it can't provide any more. If the sum of X and Y is greater than 15, this inequality is false and it won't work, okay? Hey, I need to rearrange this and get this to slope intercept form. That's going to look like this. Y is less than or equal to negative X plus 15. And then um, I can graph this because I'm in slope intercept form. My graph is going to look like this. I'm going to cross the Y axis at 15. Okay, so here's 15. That's where I cross. And my slope is going to go down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, all the way down. Okay, so there's my slope. Now, this is a less than or equal to, so I'm going to make sure I have a solid line to graph on. And I'm going to choose the test point 0, 0 to see where to shade. 0 is less than 0 plus 15. 0 is less than 15, so I'm going to shade this bottom region. Now, here's the question. Can I have an appliance where one uses 7 joules per second and the other uses 6 joules per second? Well, let's test the point 7, 6. Is 7, let's see, remember this counts up by 2, so 7 is here. 6, is that in the shaded region right here? The answer is yes, it is. So therefore, yes, um, he can send that amount of energy uh, to those appliances, and they should work just fine. And that is how you solve these problems. You're ready to do the problem set for next time.